Meatwall, fourth for care. Oh, this is lunacy! Look how meager our force is, especially considering our proximity to Galia! Uh, I love this guy. This is Septimus, one of the Bagnion, enemy Bagnion generals. He's awesome! General Septimus, sir, we're only making rounds this evening. We don't need a bigger force. No, you're wrong. Even now, those bloodthirsty bees are stalking us. I just know it. Believe me! General, please calm yourself. You see us every evening, and yet we've never had any... Enemy fire! We're under attack! It's those Galia beasts! The subunits are attacking us! What? See? See? Now do you see, Vuma? I was right! Uh, I told you! Mm -hmm. Now what do we do? <laughs> Run down all again your way. Make your pad of blood and bone. Advance! 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 Whoa. Yeesh. Light is on our side. I see the family resemblance. Keep up, everyone. Let's get to work. Begin part three. Okay, this part is this is part is awesome. As I said before, the main reason why part three is so easy is because the real mercenaries are hellishly overpowered. They are they are retardedly overpowered. Yoink. Yoink. Oh boy. I'm just trying to think of what to say here. That aside, you'd, you'd probably have no problem with part 3 if part 1 was giving you much, much trouble. And trust me, it does give people lots of trouble because it's so goddamn hard. And if part two was just like easy, easy breezy, then you'll have no problem with part three. I can say that with a straight face. All right, now for this map. We win if Skirmir arrives at the top where uh, the, that sniper Silvano is is right now. We lose if either Ike dies, Renolf dies, or Skirmir dies. I have only one thing to say about this map. This this map can be sum up, summed up in two words. Autopilot. Why? These guys are why. You can literally just sit back and do absolutely nothing, and these guys will pretty much clear the map for you. Because they're so broken. Well, these two at least. Leading the leading the lagoons, the beast lagoons here is Skirmir, a level 25 lion. And as you can see, he is absolutely well beast. No pun intended. The lion class shares both shares traits of both the well, both the tiger class and the cat class. They are pretty much have the best of both worlds. They've got the strength of the they have the strength of the tiger with the speed of the lion. Although it's not very apparent with Skirmir, at least the lion speed cap is 34 compared to the tiger's 30. So that makes some sense. As you can see, Skirmir is a destruction. He's, he's just destruction. Combined with combined his 38 strength with his 16 my S rank Fang, and you have 54 attack of of holy crap! What did I get myself into? The Lagoon Stone's gonna keep him trucking. He has resolve. So if his H HP dips below 34, he's suddenly a speed tank. Picture that. And he has provoked, so that's gonna, you know, incite enemies to like. And he also has two authority stars. Skirmir has got it made. And he also has he also transforms out of battle much slower than the other than the other beast lagoons do, which makes Skirmir an ideal choice for fighting. We also have Kitty Cat Man, Renolf. He is, without a doubt, probably the best non-royal type Lagoos unit in the game. His stats are amazing for a cat. Absolutely amazing. He puts this. He puts. He even put. He, he really puts this A rank strike. Uh, cat's strike claw to work, mainly because of his high strength stat. 
He also has a Satori sign, which you'll get to see a lot more of later on in Part 3. These are basically occult scrolls for the goos in this game. When the goos hits level 30, you can teach them their mastery skill with one of these. A concoction and all of that grass. My only problem with Renault is that he has an 8-rank strike. Other than that, he's pretty much made in the shade. Oh, and he's a cat, so his transformation is on the worst of the beast of the beast of the goos. But you'll probably get over that. Yeah, as I've said, this map is pretty much on autopilot for for 100% of the time you're out here. You can just sit back and do absolutely nothing while the Skirmir's Beast of the Goose will just will just mow through everything. They won't even break a sweat. The only thing you should really be concerned about on this map is if either Skirmir or Runolf run out of transformation gauge and then just get and then just get cornered by a bunch of enemies. It has happened to me. During my test run. It's the only thing you should be worried about. Alright, for those of you playing along at home, here's what I suggest you do. This map is really hard to lose otherwise. All you're really doing all you're really doing is clearing out the enemy side on the left side, so it makes it makes the Lagoos' charge a hell of a lot easier. So all you're really doing is just all you're really doing is just making the f making the path to the boss a lot easier for the Lagoos. But even if you don't help them, like the Psych Soul is going to be doing, you'll still be able to just manhandle most of the Lagoos. You'll still just be able to manhandle most of the enemies anyway. Oh, what? You missed! I wouldn't too worry too much about the tigers. I wouldn't too much worry too much about the Lagoos in general. Most of them have healing items. So if they run low on health, they'll just retreat to somewhere safe. Again, the only thing you ha really have to worry about here is either Skrimir or an elf untransforming in the middle of a horde of enemies. But other than that, you can just sit back, and the map will probably be done by, like, turn 7 or 8. <laughs> excuse me. Again, excuse me. That lunch was strong. For the curious, I had, like, uh, an egg sandwich. With spam. Oh, yeah, and the Lagoos side gets reinforcements. If, it, if I just didn't spare, spare the thought of that alone. Sure, he's the other. The Devoted! I love this battle theme! This is my favorite battle theme in the game. Love it! It is so Fire Emblem. It is so Fire Emblem. You can totally... You just totally... It's totally fight music. Ah, oh, I love it so much. It's the battle theme of the Grail Mercenaries. It is delicious, 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 delicious. You I won't be hearing it that often during the psych solo because the enemy's gonna attack him more than I well than one that I get hits in. Forgot to mention something about Ike. He does have a weakness. Magic. Magic is Ike's only weakness. Adapt! Critical! What's up? What the hell was that? <laughs> Just keep my Ike away from mages, and he should fare exceptionally well in the, in the heat of battle. Ow! Critical! What's up? Nope. Dead. I'm worried now! Vantage! Adapt! I'm not worried anymore. 
I was going to kill you. Not on your life. Now it gives me. Now that this brings me up, some this brings up uh, something I want to talk about about part three. The game is now going to start getting very repetitive. How so? Mainly because of the mainly because of what you're fighting. You're fighting. You're gonna be fighting pretty much nothing but tier two units. I mean, think of it this way: this this game lasts about a good 44, 43 map, 43 chapters. If we're taking into account all of the chapters we've gotten done for so far, we're about chapter. We're about uh, as equivalent of chapter 16. Now, in a normal Fire Emblem game, by by chapter 16, you're still fr pretty much the majority of the units you're fighting are pretty much still on on t on tier one. The fact of the matter is, this game is trying to exploit a tier th a tier th a tier a three tier system, but it doesn't do it very well because of the fact that well. Because how the enemies are split up, and how th and how the every, because how the chapters are split up, the characters are split up. And with all the and how the class distribution of these characters is is divided into. Like you saw, like you saw in Pat, um, for the beginning of part one, beginning of part one, near the end of part, and near the end of part one. Practically, practically all the all the enemies were very close to very close to being level 20 first tier, which is retarded in an actual Fire Emblem sense. Because that just means the, that just means the enemies are getting too powerful too fast. And then you had a majority of units in the last chapter of Part Two, who were also. Holy shit! <laughs> Critical hit. We're also tier two. And now part three rolls along, rolls along, and you have majority of tier two units, and it's going to keep that way for the remainder of the game. Like we're gonna be fighting nothing but tier two units. And no one say anything about part four, or I will smite you, because I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil it for my viewers. Not yet, at least. But you do at least see what I'm coming, where I'm coming from, right? That there, there, there is a, there is a distinct lack of class variety in, along, or, along these parts. A distinct lack of class variety. Bonk. And when this game is trying to cover up the fact of the lack of variety with the fact that it's just going to pulp, just throw in numbers of. Huge numbers of enemies at you. This is Steel Sword. It's basically trying to be like FE4, except it's not really doing that. And with FE4, at least, while there was some repetitiveness about it, at least the at least the enemies you fought had variety, and they mixed it up. HP is max, strength is max, speed and defense, nice. Good start, Ike. He already capped two of the stats he was going to cap anyway. Now, strength defense is two points away from capping. Speed is four points away. And then just let the bonus experience the rest so he gets resistance. Because trust me, Ike will be needing every point of resistance. So yeah, at least when it, when it came to enemy variety, FE FE4 at least had some variety, cla enemy class variety that you could just mix it up once in a while. Holy crap! Another critical hit. That's probably what I don't like about. This is probably one of the few things that I don't like about Part Three: the, the lack of enemy variety. 